What is up guys? Welcome back to the Lumsden Motorsports Garage. I'm Wade Lumsden. Uh, today we're going to be doing some more on the bootlegger. So, woo! Uh, first things first, as you can see, the motorhome's gone, so woot woot. Uh, still haven't figured out what I'm doing with it, but I got it towed out to my dad's house. Uh, truck is running, and the trailer's here. Modified is still inside the trailer, so that's awesome. But uh, I went off and, and did some other stuff here. Um, I got went ahead and got the, the battery installed. It's bolt, the battery box is bolted down on the inside. Um, I also installed an eyelet on each side so I can throw a strap over the top, have it tied down, and it's all wired up. Um, I gotta tie up my wires still, but uh, we got our got our switch. I just drew my on and off here, but um, show you what we were looking for with the wire in. So she runs, um, but then when you come over to here, the way you gotta wire it um, is you gotta run a wire. That's what this this little red wire in the background is. You gotta run a wire from the alternator to the battery side of the switch. So that way when you turn it off, it kills the whole thing. Um, if you leave it, leave the alternator hooked up to the other side of the switch, uh, when you go to kill that safety switch there, it'll stay running, so. Got to make sure you do that right. Um, and we got some other stuff to do. So fun story, <laughs> super fun story here. Uh, got the old man to come and try to get into the car the other day. Uh, and it's probably a good thing I didn't get that on camera. It made me laugh a little too hard. Um, but <laughs> uh, he's a big guy, a really big guy. Um, and so what we're gonna end up doing here, um, and that's actually what I'm gonna do next, uh, to try to get him some more room to get in and out. I think I'm gonna trim off this section of the door. It'll give him just a little bit more room. I might even have to cut out some of the B pillar and fold it over, but um, I'm gonna cut this off, this whole section, um, and roll it over to possibly give him some more room uh, to get in and out of the window the other thing we're gonna do um, I know I, I kind of wanted to leave the stock steering wheel but I don't think that's gonna happen um, my my dad has some uh, uh, mobility issues in his legs um, they're nothing nothing major it's just um, um, he's, he's old right or <laughs> I'd like that's the way I could say it he's old uh, so just to make it easier for him to get in and out of the car, uh, I think I'm gonna end up removing the steering wheel and putting a removable steering wheel on. Um, but I'm waiting for the, the nut piece in the center to be able to do that. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, do some small stuff. Um, keep going here and uh, we'll get the saws all out and cut apart the door. And um, there's, there's still plenty of other little stuff to do on this thing, but it ain't far off. So another thing here I didn't point out earlier um, was uh, there's another reason why he was having a hard time getting in and out of the car. Um, and that's partially to do because of the roll cage, right? Uh, he's sitting up a little close to the dash, a lot closer than he wants to be. Uh, and this is why. Um, when you look at this car, it's a four door, right? And we're used to building race cars out of coupes and most coupes the doors are longer so the B pillars move backwards right it's usually move back to about here so really what should have happened is the main hoop here that's welded in should have actually been welded in um, farther back probably back to here to give that space that he would want for his super long legs um, I'll be honest, I, I crawled in and out of this and I, I can drive it. It's a little tight, but I could drive it. It's This is really caged for a smaller person. 
um, but you know it's the stuff you think about afterwards once you get the get things built um, again we didn't build the cage uh, we had somebody build it for us and you know rule of thumb is you put put the main hoop right behind the b pillar or within the b pillar area rather than coming backwards um, but that's what we should have done so uh, just wanted to bring that up um, so you can think about it when you do your cage All right, so it's on there. Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do here. I, I beat it down a little bit so there's no real sharp edge or corner, but um, same thing over here, beat it down. Uh, but should be able to get a nice good weld across the door when we get ready to weld the door shut. And this back door, um, we'll make sure it's nice and solid uh, with good welds all the way around. Um, and that should do just fine. So another one of the little small things we did and again this one's really small the field door uh one of the first episodes uh for the bootlegger build we had to get into the trunk uh to be able to open this to be able to get gas in it to move it um i went ahead and there's just a little screw with a little plastic deal here that clips on to here to release the field door um i went ahead and just remove that so that it will open and close we started talking about it and with that um, little quick release lever being in there um, and the idea that this is a contact class we had a feeling that you know the back was going to get crushed in or even this would get crushed uh, and make it to where a guy could not put fuel in it um, so instead of dealing with the possibility of not being able to put fuel in it granted if you start with it full it's probably going to get really good gas mileage <laughs> um, and you won't really have to put gas in it uh, more than once every couple races uh, but <laughs> just so we don't have to deal with it I went ahead and removed that piece and then if this fuel door gets uh, messed up too much um, we'll just take it off later so it's one of the great things about this class so we talked about moving the battery and the alternator and stuff and so what I did is I just made a new wire uh, hooked it up to the alternator. This one is the old wire right here. Um, since it's in the harness, I'm just kind of leaving it um, to do what it wants to do. But it ran over here. This was the other end. And it came to the other side of our power distribution box over here, right here. So um, make sure 
you undo that end if you're going to leave the wiring in there make sure you undo this end as well because um, this is hooked up to battery <laughs> so that that other end will be hot and it'll spark and arc on you if you don't disconnect both ends so um, and then we uh, ran the wires back and that should be good for that should be good for the charging system so the other thing I did for this battery box was for the ground um, I actually went off of one of the seatbelt studs. You can see there's another seatbelt stud um, right there. And so I went off of the seatbelt stud, uh, made it to where I had to drill a bigger hole um, through my battery cable end here, but it worked out. And then as you can see, it's kind of ground around the outside. I took a wire brush and got rid of as much paint as I could just to make sure that there was good metal contact there um, and with the weird divot below it i put a washer on top of that so it could kind of uh, make good contact and with all the metal below it and then uh, double nutted my my ground wire on here uh, it's the only metric nuts i had so <laughs> that's that's what we got all right so um finally got my broken shocks out of the trailer you can see that one's bent pretty good and the ends broke off and this one the well yeah it completely gone it's down in there somewhere i think but it's got a huge bend in the side of it um so at least i got my shocks dug out i have a couple other um broken shocks laying around down here um that i'm gonna box up and get sent over to steve at tsm um he always does a really good, really, really good job on shocks. I just do a really bad job of taking care of them. Uh, <laughs> so make sure you start taking care of your shocks. I've always been really bad about it in the past. I'm trying to get better about it. Hence my shock protectors and um, bringing them inside during winter time and all of that happy stuff. Keeping a, a record of how many nights you got on them and checking them after every race. And I wish I had a makeshift shock dyno or a, a dyno force machine you know so i could check all these and when they start getting worn out send them off to get rebuilt but i don't have that all that gucci stuff so um i just uh <laughs> do with what i got but really right now um this uh well this pile of stuff and um this race car <laughs> my dad's race car sitting in the driveway are kind of holding me up from um getting the modified ready to go race but I know that I'm also going to be waiting on shocks. So um, I'm kind of out of left rear shocks or at least the left rear shocks that I would want to race uh, tracks around here. I, I, I could go race with what I got, but I know that I would not be very successful because they're the valving is just way off from what I want. Um, they're, I don't know uh, how, how to describe it. Those would be shocks that I'd go jumping with uh for the left rear versus uh dry slick um conditions around here so uh, it's definitely a very very heavy 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 rough track shock um versus my the dry slick conditions that you get in the nevada area and i just i would prefer to go out and perform uh better but you know is what it is so i'm gonna get my my shock sent off He's got a really quick turnaround time. Go check his stuff out, uh, TSM Shocks. So um, he usually has a really quick turnaround time, really good service, um, and he'll chat at you about, about your shocks and, and your program and, um, and all that stuff. Remember, stay in your own notebook uh, when it comes to shocks and, and springs and, and loads and all that stuff. Um, you want to stay in your own notebook and chat with him in your own notebook. I can tell you everything that I do, but it's probably not going to help you because that's my notebook. Um, so, yeah, going to get these sent off. Um, I'm going to continue to play with the bootlegger for my dad for a little while. Uh, I think he's chomping at the bit to get a hold of it because uh, I guess he's going to do the paint job and all that happy stuff. So it's probably going to leave... If I had to guess, it's probably going to leave next week, um, whether I'm done doing stuff to it or not, uh, since everything that's left is is small stuff. So um, that's going to be it for this video, guys. <clears throat> I'm doing my best to get them out for you. Uh, I, uh, 
again, still fairly new to this scheduling and, and, and figuring things out. So um, I get at you when I can get at you as much as I can and um, make sure you like and subscribe down below if you like what we're doing here. We got plenty of other cool, fun projects and stuff coming up um, along with just, you know, the regular race season. And um, I started Twitch streaming what I do here in the garage too. So um, if you want to hang out with me on Twitch, uh, there's a link down below. Check that out. Um, I get on when I can there too. <laughs> um, and, and, and cool. So we'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.